Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Brent. And, and we're, we're the Penumbra, Penumbra Brothers. Brothers. We focus on you. Hey everybody, Glenn from the Penumbra Brothers here. We've been asked to shoot a couple of videos on Skull. So everybody's always nervous about Skull because there's so many different, there's facial bones, there's skull, there's sinuses, there's nasal bones, and they get nervous because it feels like there's a whole bunch of positions. Well, if you look at the ART content spe exam content specification guide, there's really only three positions that are really frequent. The first one we're going to look at is a lateral skull. So you can use the lateral skull for the skull, facial bones, nasal bones, sinuses, and orbits. So it's one position for five uh, different exams. So the positioning is exactly the same on all of them. So you have your patient up here. IOML is parallel to the long axis of the IR. So you have your IR in lengthways. Now you always want to make sure your inner pupillary line is perpendicular to the IR. Keeps you from having tilt. Your mid sagittal plane or MSP needs to be parallel to the IR so you don't have rotation. So as long as you get those two right, then the only other thing you have to do is your IOML is parallel to the long axis of the IR. So it kind of looks like the head sort of tipping down a little bit. Now, so we've got him in position now. So the only thing now is centering is the only difference. So the first thing is uh, for skull, you're two inches above the EAM. So there you go. Pretty easy, right? If you're doing facial bones, it's halfway between the EAM and the outer canthus at the zygoma. So you're going to move them up and center them right there. If it's the orbits, then you center at the outer canthus. Facial bones, you're centering, depending on whether you're using Merrill's or uh, bond traggers. Uh, Merrill says one half to one inch posterior to the outer canthus. Bond traeger says halfway between the EAM and the outer canthus. So it's all pretty much the same. And then you have sinuses, which is, oh, that's sinuses, sorry. <laughs> and then nasal bones. Nasal bones, is, again, exact same position. The only difference is one half inch distal to the nasian. So we're gonna center that up. And then that's it. That's five positions for, or one position for five different exams. So we're trying to make this a little bit more simplified. So now we're gonna talk about the Caldwell view. Again, you can use the Caldwell for skull, facial bones, nasal bones, orbits, and sinuses, but the positioning is exactly the same. The difference between this and the lateral is even the exiting point or your CR is exactly the same. So for the Caldwell view, you have your patient facing the IR. Again, you wanna make sure there's no rotation. So uh, I always stand behind the patient and actually look at their head and make sure they're not rotated. And you can look from the side and make sure that the OML, so their head's gonna look like it's kind of forward. OML is perpendicular to the IR and you're centering at the nasian. So the only difference here with this is your collimation. So skull, facial bones, nasal bones, orbits, all of them are exactly the same. Same exiting point, just slightly different uh, collimation. Now the only difference is on the sinuses, you have to have a, uh, you have to make sure and have a horizontal beam because on this one you have 15 degrees caudal angulation. So the only difference is 15 degrees. So right now my OML is perpendicular. So you can put this up against here. So you make sure your OML is perpendicular. So the only difference is now your OML needs to make a 15 degree angulation to the IR. So you tip their head back 15 degrees and you have a perpendicular beam. Again, it exits at the nasian, so it's exactly the same. This is 15 degrees. This is a goniometer. You can't see it from here but because the numbers are too small. But this is a goniometer, so if you're not sure what 15 degrees is, get one of these. They're pretty cheap. You can get them for about four or five bucks off the internet and that'll tell you exactly how much you need to adjust the patient and the beam. Okay, water is view. We're going to look at the waters view because you can use it for four different exams. So you use it for facial bones, nasal bones, orbits, and sinuses. The only difference is the orbits can be slightly different. But, 
So our OML forms at 37 degrees. Again, I use the godiometer. This is 37 degrees. So we put our OML up here. We make sure that we are 37 degrees to the IR. And we have a great position. Again, you want to stand behind the patient, make sure there's no rotation. And centering is at the nasium. So that is for the facial bones, nasal bones, and sinuses, all with the perpendicular beam. The only difference is if you're looking for orbits, some places do a modified waters. So the difference is you change that to 55 degrees. So your OML is now 55 degrees to the IR. And that's the only difference. It still exits at uh, the Nasian. Now, here's the difference. The reason you use a modified waters and use that 55 degrees as what that does, it takes the floor of the orbits and lines that up perpendicular to the IR. So it's a better view if you're looking for a blowout orbit or fracture or something that's leaking into your maxillary sinuses. And that's it. That's the waters view. Four exams, one view. We've talked about three different positions. The one are the most common for the skull, facial bones, all that. Um, if you have any questions about those or any other positions, just make a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. We do answer those and we will shoot videos per your request. Thank you and have a great day.